fantasy sports is coming to Terra, the Nebula token launch, UST adoption, and a whole bunch more. This is the Lunar Orbit Podcast, and today is Tuesday, the 26th of April of 2022. Now flip out for that like button, and let's get into it. So the first thing I wanted to talk about today was the Fan Fury token, which is just about to go live through a Prism Forge style launch. Now I've covered Fan Fury once on the podcast before. It's a fantasy sports platform and it's going to be covering five major sports, including many of the top leagues globally. Now, one thing that's very cool about Fan Fury is their smart tokenomics. They have a very fair revenue distribution model where the rake fee is 5%, that's an industry low, and 68% of teams share in the winnings. So the 95% of the prize pool is distributed amongst 68% of participants. On top of that rake fee, 50% of it goes back to the liquidity providers and stakers of the Fury token and 40% of that rake fee is burned. So there's continual burn pressure over time and the token will become deflationary. They have some really cool gamification elements too where you can pledge your support to your favorite team and the more supporters that that team has, a greater distribution of the rewards is shared among them. So it's a very clever way to create hype and drive social engagement to drive more users to the platform. Now, as I mentioned, their token is just going live at the moment in a Prism style forge. But by the time this podcast is released, the forge will have probably Probably closed but the token should become freely tradable on the 28th now lots of people like the prism forge style launch it seems to have been the most successful because token owners don't really have an incentive to dump the token straight after launch however for some reason some users did dump the token at a loss on day one so if you've missed out on the forge keep a close eye on the fury token when it becomes tradable tomorrow because it might be a nice opportunity to get in on the action if not you'll be able to purchase the token at the current market price and you'll be able to stake it to start receiving some passive income based off the success of the platform so the next bit of news i wanted to cover was a development from terraform labs they're winding up their terra delegation program where they were staking some luna and that probably means that some luna is going to hit the circulating supply after it gets undelegated. A lot of people are wondering what that's going to mean. My take on it is it's probably going to end up being given to the Lunar Foundation Guard for more burning to add to the yield reserves for Anchor and to add further liquidity for the Avalanche and Bitcoin backstops to help protect the peg. It's also quite possible some is burned into the other stable coins to start providing liquidity to bootstrap the Vertex protocol, which is an FX exchange trading platform. So that's something to keep an eye on. It also means that there's going to be greater staking rewards for the current Lunar stakers because there's going to be less Lunar stakers from Terraform Labs. So this should improve the staking rewards that you get for being a Lunar Staker and should also help with the Prism token price because it's also going to be getting greater staking rewards as a protocol. Before I continue, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Hi, I'm Jerry, host of the Lunar Orbit podcast, where I provide regular alpha and updates on all things Terra Luna. If you enjoy this content, consider supporting the channel by smashing that like button, hitting subscribe and hitting the notifications bell so you get all my videos in a timely fashion. Okay, moving right along. I wanted to mention this tweet by Yoda Research. These guys are an excellent follow. They have lots of fantastic analysis on blockchain stuff in general. But this particular tweet caught my eye and it highlights the growing trend of transactions on the Terra blockchain. Now all blockchains are really only as useful as their network effects. And as we can see, there is a steady increase over time of the transactional volume on Terra, and it's surprised me how close it's actually getting to mainnet Ethereum. Jumping across to the pro.nansen.ai dashboard, we can see some further details. And as I hover over this graph here, we can see that the transactional volume of Terra is about half that of Ethereum. I was quite surprised, given that Terra has only about 80,000 active daily users compared to Ethereum's, which is about 380. Now Yoda here points out what happens when we combine the network effects of Terra to the network effects of Avalanche, as we can see the rapid growth in Avalanche volume. Now, if UST becomes the main stablecoin on Avalanche, you can see how the Luna token accrues more value based off UST demand. Terra's main product is not the Terra blockchain. It's UST and its assortment of stablecoins. It's money itself. In fact, it's better than traditional money. It's digital money across the multi-chain universe. And on the subject of Terra stablecoins, INT, the digital Indian rupee, is about to get a heck of a lot more exposure to a whole lot of people. Flint money is going after the Indian market 
to provide a seamless experience for people to get access to the extra yield that Terra stablecoins provide. Now, Flint Money did a $5.1 million seed raise in January, and there's some pretty prominent investors here, including Sequoia Capital, Coinbase Ventures, Doquan, and key angel investors from Polygon, Aave, and Block Tower. So Flint Money is similar to Tick Money that we're going to have here in Australia, Alice Money in America, Astral Finance in Europe, where users can enjoy banking-like services, but with far better yield. Most of these platforms will probably offer around 10% savings, which is a heck of a lot better than the 0.1% We'll get in a traditional bank. This article from The Week magazine in India highlights the value proposition of Flint and the size of the market they're going after. We are targeting close to 500 million users who are crypto curious and have idle stable coins or cash and are chasing higher yields than conventional options. The total addressable market of the Terra stable coins is absolutely huge and platforms like Flint should provide a seamless way for normal users to get exposure to the Terra ecosystem without having to worry about the complexities of crypto. It seems mass adoption might be just around the corner as more of these platforms go live. The next thing I wanted to talk about was the Nebula token. Its liquidity bootstrapping pool goes live today. And it looks like there'll be two ways you can access the token. One through the Nebula website and the secondary interface via CoinHall. So there isn't a single point of failure during the launch. If you're not familiar with liquidity bootstrapping pools and how they work, I strongly suggest you give Terra Watcher a follow and jump onto his YouTube video and give it a watch. He does a really good job of breaking down a reasonably complex topic. But in essence, the way a liquidity bootstrapping pool is highlighted in this chart. The pool will start with a very uneven weighting with 2% of the Nebula token and 98% of UST. Over the next five days, that weighting will slowly balance out to a 60-40 arrangement where the pool contains 60% Nebula tokens and 40% UST. Users can come and buy the token at that current market price at any given point over the five days, but it's designed to deflate over time. At some point towards the end of the pool, the market will decide what a fair price is and the price should gradually stabilize or even begin to rise. The benefit of a liquidity bootstrapping pool is that users are protected from being front run by bots. Any bots that buy as soon as the pool goes live will be paying the maximum price possible for the token. And if you're keen on accumulating some Nebula token, I strongly suggest you start DCAing dollar cost averaging into the pool over time at a price you feel happy beginning to buy at, generally around day three and onwards. In my last episode, I talked about the Nebula protocol and highlighted some of its potential. It is gonna take some time to grow, but I think over time, it's gonna be a very successful protocol that is highly sought after and used by many people. Buying into programmable index funds that can optimize itself around volatile markets also be used as collateral is a very unique and enticing product. And Doquan himself has said other layer one blockchains will have their own nebula clusters. So if you want to have access to the Solano ecosystem, the Phantom ecosystem, Polygon, Osmos, you can probably just dollar cost average into a nebula cluster and have access to an entire ecosystem with a single purchase, which will simplify the user experience and tax implications. The Nebula alone is just another reason to be bullish on the Terra ecosystem and the unique DeFi offerings it's starting to present. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoy this content, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and maybe consider watching one of my other videos.